I'd like to welcome you to the Power to Parent, uh, the third part of the series, uh, Common Challenges. I uh, was uh, very much looking forward to getting this part out of the way, but also quite challenging uh, to be able to figure out just what were my eight themes that needed addressing. And I hope I uh, was able to get the themes that individuals were looking to hear, to develop. Uh, some of it will build, of course, on the material we've already covered. Uh, it, the first one, uh, the vital connection, the, uh, the focus was on relationship. Absolutely essential, foundational, basic to everything that we've been talking about in this Power to Parent series. That, uh, again, to put it in a nutshell, that the child's relationship with a parent, uh, with those responsible for the child, is the context for raising the child. Uh, context is usually invisible. Uh, very few words are ever put to context, and that is why it has probably been taken for granted. Uh, culture uh, usually determines context, but as our culture is falling apart, uh, then we're losing this context, context sorry, in which to raise our children. And so this, this is the vital connection, uh, absolutely key and foundational, and we'll continue to build on this foundation in this third part. Uh, in the second part, the, uh, the theme was the maturation processes, attachment as a womb uh, for maturation, uh, helping children grow up, and here we, we focused on the very essence of the developmental approach, uh, that, that we as parents, we are raising a child in the sense of bringing him to his full human potential. Uh, we talked about the three adaptive process, or the three processes rather, uh, the adaptive process, how we become changed by that which we cannot change. Uh, the emergent process, that process by which a child becomes viable as a separate being. And the integrative process, uh, that process in which we are moved to feel dissonance when there is complexity within, when there are conflicting feelings within. And how each of these three processes uh, bears much fruit. And that this is how we grow up. This is how a child grows up. And the responsibility of the parent in fostering these processes. Of course, uh, uh, the uh, key issue that we came, uh, the key concern that we came back uh, to over and over again in that, uh, that uh, in part two was the fact uh, that although we all grow older as human beings, we don't all grow up, that we can get stuck. And of course we get stuck, the earlier we get stuck, the more the impact. And uh, that set the stage for the third part uh, the part that we'll go into now, in which we'll be focusing on that as well as other things, but we'll be focusing on the issues of, of, uh, of stuckness. All children get stuck from time to time, and sometimes they need our help in getting unstuck. Uh, sometimes uh, children uh, get unstuck quite spontaneously, uh, but it is, uh, it is a human condition, and it is something that we want to, uh, when our children are running into difficulty, we want to look at that. That brings us uh, to, the, um, uh, to the Power to Parent 3. And I decided to call it Common Challenges. Uh, now, I've talked about the challenges already. Uh, we had almost a challenge, I think, for every session. I was looking at them and trying to add them up, and I think I missed maybe one or two sessions. So that would leave about 14 challenges that we talked about. But this was for everyday parenting. These were the challenges that basically derived from the material uh, that, uh, that we hold on to our kids, uh, that, uh, uh, well, you'll, uh, hopefully you'll remember all of those. I don't right now, uh, but, uh, but that you do. What I meant here uh, by common challenges, by common, uh, I meant um, uh, common in the sense that every parent, every parent will face these challenges from time to time. Uh, that there are uh, always storms, uh, there's always times of crisis, um, and that these are common. Uh, these are common, not unusual, that these are common. 
And so uh, they're common in that sense. Uh, they're common in the sense that these represent uh, the primary difficulties and problems that, um, uh, that I talked with parents over the 35 years or more in my parent consulting and with teachers about their students. So they're common in the sense that these are some of the most, or at least the roots of the most uh, common presenting uh, concerns. Uh, not how the, the problem was presented, but the roots of, of uh, those concerns. They're, they're challenges. They're challenges in the sense that they are not easy. Uh, these are some of the more daunting, more difficult, more demanding, requiring patience, uh, finding our way through, uh, struggling our way through. These are the challenges that I often spent hours with parents uh, uh, working through on these. And after more than 35 years of, of, of consulting with parents, um, I very much wanted to put something back, to give back what I had learned. And this really is, in this session, is being able to give back to parents uh, especially when they're uh, struggling from time to time. Uh, the, uh, the learnings, the insights that I glean, uh, gleaned uh, from thousands and thousands of hours of, uh, of contemplating these issues, discussing these issues, working through these issues with parents. So hopefully I can find the words uh, to be able to uh, describe uh, what it is that I see. That's always my challenge. It feels that words were my second language. Uh, vision is my first. I see things long before I can put them into words. And so I hope I can find the words for those things uh, to make complex problems uh, understood in a simple way uh, so that uh, we can follow from there into action. So that is my, that is my hope uh, for this. Uh, the challenges that we're going to be talking about here um, <coughs> are, uh, first of all, uh, thinking developmentally uh, when facing challenges. Uh, the first part, thinking developmentally, of course, is, uh, is that we are able to also respond to this from our head, not only our heart. And uh, sometimes we need to do this. And so it's, it's thinking developmentally. Uh, by, this time, uh, by this time in the series, uh, I'm sure you wouldn't even be here viewing this DVD or taking this uh, uh, course uh, if, uh, if there wasn't some, uh, if you weren't a developmentalist at heart, if, there's, if this was not resonating uh, with, uh, with your intuition. Unless, of course, you like the sound of my voice so much that you just have to come back and back. I doubt whether that is true. So I'm assuming it's your love for the material that brings you here. And so you are an intuitive, you are a developmentalist at heart. Uh, the issue is, is in a rainy day, uh, uh, when the heart is tired, when the heart is exhausted, and the heart sometimes turns cold, uh, when emotion uh, has, is uh, stronger than intuition, uh, that we need something to guide us. Uh, we, need, uh, we need a philosophy to guide us. We need to be able to think with our head. And so uh, thinking developmentally when facing challenges, and that will go to this as soon as I uh, introduce the rest. Uh, secondly, uh, recognizing the signs of trouble. Uh, the uh, presenting problems are often quite noisy, and, uh, and often we miss uh, the underlying signs of trouble. Sometimes parents would come to me uh, with great concerns of very noisy behavior. And uh, when I looked to see if there were any signs of trouble, there were none. Uh, this child was in remarkably good state. Uh, parents were just focusing on, uh, on things that all parents trip over, like how do you get him to do his chores? You know, how do you get him to put away his things? Well, if, if uh, that is the major concern, then you can count your blessings. Uh, and, uh, of course, you've already known that you're not going to get those answers to this in this course. Uh, and so we're going to be talking about when the child is in real trouble, uh, not just when there are the normal day-to-day uh, uh, -day kinds of, of difficulties. So how to recognize the signs of trouble. Uh, living with a sensitive child. Uh, they are increasing in numbers, and we'll touch on why uh, that is in session three. And so if uh, you don't have one of these sensitive children yourself, you will at least know a very sensitive child if you're not married to one. 
uh, and one way or another, this material will be relevant, I can assure you. Uh, and so, uh, talking about living with a sensitive child. Uh, softening defenses in a child, this is the, the um, uh, crux, uh, the theme, the center of the whole material. Uh, this is what I kept referring to. Uh, in session one, I mean in part one and part two, we will get there, right? and now we will get there. Uh, we will get there to talking about how to soften the defenses. In fact, I've split this material into three parts because there's really three parts to it. There's, we'll talk uh, softening defenses, we'll continue it on in how to cultivate resilience in a child, uh, which also has to do with melting the defenses. And then, uh, because uh, uh, alpha children have such a difficult time uh, with, uh, with finding, uh, with getting to their soft heart, uh, we will deal with this as well. Because uh, how, and this, this is quite a challenge, how to lead an alpha child. And of course, uh, to lead him to his tears. Uh, is quite a challenge. To lead him to his soft heart is quite a challenge. And so those three sessions uh, will be focusing on, on restoring, uh, preserving uh, soft hearts in our children. Uh, session seven uh, will be on the challenges of disciplining a, a child uh, who is not showing uh, the proper fruit for his age of, of adaptive functioning, of integrative functioning, of mixed feelings. Of, uh, is, is very slow to tears or the tears are stuck and a child who is, uh, is not being moved to stand on his own two feet to become his own person. Uh, these children have uh, usually present, not always, uh, many more behavioral problems. Uh, they don't always present as obvious behavioral problems, uh, but certainly the imposing order on these children is very much of a challenge. And finally, uh, in the last session, I will try to, to put into a, a review of the practices that are distinctive uh, to this approach. Uh, I, will, uh, I have uh, organized the material into 12 pillars of practice, and uh, we'll take a look at each one uh, and, uh, so that you can see what, uh, what uh, practicing the developmental approach looks like, putting it into practice looks like, and also to be able to then do this uh, when, when facing challenges.